in this web tutorial, we're going to discuss just a few of the things that you're going to see in the Excel Module 3 projects. If you look at my screen, you can see that something looks just a little bit weird. And if I scroll down, it looks funny, and I have this special scroll over here. And uh, it's easy to do, but one of the first things you're going to have to do is remove this. So if we click the View tab and we have the split panes, we can just uncheck that and notice that it all goes away. Another thing that you might need to do is freeze the panes. So we're still in the View tab, and right here we're going to click Freeze Panes. Now you have a bunch of options. You can freeze just the top row or the first column, or you might have to freeze a specific amount of uh, set of panes. Um, for this, I want to be able to scroll down and still see this, and if I've scrolled right, I want to see this set, these set of cells. So I'm going to click, put my cursor here in B6, and then I'm going to click Freeze Panes. Now, notice when I scroll down, it, it still shows me that top and still shows me the dates over here. So that's easy enough to do. Let's talk about drag fill. We've talked about this in other project videos, but um, I'm going to go ahead and select this cell. I currently have a sum function here, and this little green box right here, if I click and drag that over, it will carry that formula over and populate the information with the correct column. So right now I have G6, here I have F and E. It's just uh, drag fill is wonderful, makes your life easy. Let's talk about inserting a spark line. So I'm going to put my cursor here in L, and I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And you right here you have line, column, and win loss. Make sure that if it tells you line, you put line, and if you put column, you put column. So we'll go ahead and do line here. It's going to ask me to select my range. Let's just go ahead and select all of this, and then click OK. And notice that it puts this little line here. Once you do that, you have the special design tab. You can change the colors. Um, you can mark high spots and, and low spots and negative points. And even if uh, I put a line and I did want a line, I want a column, I could click column and it would do that for me as well. One of my favorite features in the Microsoft Office products is the format painter. So I have this, this cell. I've set it up with a specific size, a font. Um, the colors, all of that good stuff, and I want to copy it to multiple cells. And I don't want to have to go to each cell and do the same steps over and over. So they have the Format Painter. So with this cell selected, if I click here, and I uh, click the Format Painter, now I can click a cell, and it will add that same formatting to that cell. Let's say I had multiple cells that I wanted to do this with. If I have that cell selected and I actually double-click the Format Painter, I can click multiple cells and it will do that for me. Just make sure you uncheck this so that you can click and do other things in your spreadsheet. Let's talk about uh, rotating text. So I have this right here, this date, and um, maybe I want it to, to look just a little bit different in that cell. I can rotate the text. So on the Home tab and the Alignment dialog box, you can uh, go to this side right here if it tells you a specific uh, degree. Let's go ahead and put 90, and we'll click OK. And notice how it lines that up in that cell. There's a lot of different um, degrees that you could put it. You can also do it from here, but that one gave us a specific degree it wanted. So if you wanted to change and play around with that, you could. Let's talk about selecting multiple cells that are not next to each other. So let's say I wanted these dates, and I want to select them. And I also needed to select this totals row over here. Well, I can't click over here because the cursor just jumps over here and my selection disappears. So I'm going to go ahead and reselect that. Now I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard and then select that second group of cells and let go. Now I've selected two different uh, ranges at the same time. And we're going to go ahead and insert a chart based upon this information. Now uh, um, let's just do a column here. We'll do a 2D, no big deal. And that's an easy way to go ahead and, and add all that information. Now, some of the settings you might need to add to this chart is maybe change the chart style. If you're not sure which one, of course, hover. And you can do a lot of different things. You got the quick uh, quick layout here. So maybe you want to, it tells you layout eight. Make sure you select that. And then um, one of the other things that you can do is add chart elements. Now, it's also up here, but we're going to go ahead and do it from here. And let's say I needed to add a primary and a horizontal access label. I could do that. It adds it, and I can type in here. 
Another thing it might ask you to do is to change these numbers to an accounting format with decimals, two decimal places. So if I select this right here and I click Format Access, I get this window that opens up. And from here, if I click Number, I can change the category to Accounting, two decimal places or more. And then I'm good there. You can click off of it and close out of this box. And then one other thing you might need to do is to add data labels. And then from here, you can click Outside End. Let's talk about um, two different formulas. We'll delete this chart. We're going to first one, it's a, a pretty nifty formula. It's called now. We're just going to click the equal sign, click now, and open and close our parentheses. And it gives me the date. And then, of course, I can go back and change some of the formatting if I don't like how that goes. But um, it gives me all of that information. And it's just a simple formula, and it updates. And then another thing is the if formula. So I do not encourage you to hand key this formula in. You definitely want to click this button up here. And we'll go ahead and type if, click go, and it pulls up all those if type functions. We're going to go ahead and select this one. Now, let's just quickly take a step back and discuss this. So the first part of this is our logical test. So I'm going to go ahead and select my first cell. And what we're going to do is say, is this cell greater than, and you could add equals to equal to it, but we're just going to do greater than 90,000. And then that's it. We're going to move on to the next part of the argument. And uh, it's going to tell us over here that it's false. But now we need to put in two things. The first thing is, what do we do if it's true? Well, what do you want Excel to do? We're just going to put, um, we'll put gain for this one. And then uh, we'll hit tab. And then we'll put loss here. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, it, told, it looked at the, the, the formula that we had, it looked at the numbers, and it said, look, it's not greater than, so we're going to go ahead and do the second option, which is loss. Now, let me click and drag this over. Now, we have all, everything else is a gain, because all of these other cells are greater than that 90,000 that we put in. Another thing that we need to look at is called absolute reference. So, let me go ahead and delete this so I have this formula here right and if I click and drag down it gets all crazy like Excel saying what are you doing and the reason is is we have this these cells that are being multiplied together and it's taken for this one it's taking this by this by 52 and I'm sorry it's this by this times that by 52 and when we go to the next cell well it's looking for c5 well we have nothing in c5 and then here it's a bunch of text so it's like what are you doing so what i need is i do want this multiplied by b7 but when i get to this one i i also want this to multiply it by b8 but i do not want c4 in the formula to change so i need to go back to this and in order to lock this cell so that no matter where I drag the formula, whether it's up, down, right, left, C4 stays the same regardless because that is our constant. What I need to do is put in dollar signs. And now when I click and drag down, that C4 does not change. See, in this cell, it's C4, this cell, it's C4, this cell, C4, and, and this one is also C4. And what I did was a, what is called an absolute reference. I made this C4 putting dollar signs in front of the column in the row an absolute reference. So no matter where I drag that formula, it does not change. So we're going to do the goal seeking. We're going to go ahead and go to the data tab here. We're going to go to the, the what if analysis in the forecast group and we're going to click goal seek here. Now the first part of this is what cell is the constant? What are we changing? Um, what do we want changed into what? So we have the C12 here, and what I'm going to do is key in 60 million, and it's asking us on the third part, what cell are we changing to try and get to this goal? So we're going to go ahead and click north of downtown, and then I'm going to click OK. And notice how it changed all of that. I put 6 million instead of 60 million, so that's why it brought up a negative number.